I'd like to show you this model of an old telephone exchange. This type of exchange was invented by a man called Elman B. Strauger, who lived in Kansas in the 1880s. At that time, telephones were pretty few and far between. And if you wanted to make a call to, say, Mr. Jones, the butcher, then you just pick up the receiver, you'd be connected to the operator, and she would say, number please. And if you didn't know Mr. Jones's number, it didn't really matter because it was only a small town and she probably could put you through anyway. So that was sorted. Unfortunately for Mr. Strouger, he was an undertaker. And in that town at the time, there were two undertakers. The operator happened to be married to the other one. So every time somebody rang up asking for the undertaker, she put the call through to her husband. Poor old Mr. Strouger was losing money, so he had to do some quick thinking. And what he managed to come up with was a system of switches, one which fixed at the telephone end that the caller could tap and send pulses down the line, and another one in the exchange that would operate to these pulses and connect the line through to Mr. Jones the butcher. So didn't need the operator anymore, so job done. Over the years, Strouger also managed to invent the telephone dial, so that made life even easier. And gradually, this system became the standard automatic telephone system. In the early 1900s, when the British Post Office were beginning to consider converting our exchanges to automatic, it was the Strouger system that they went for. 1912 saw the first automatic exchange and the first telephones with dials and this system was used by the post office up till the late 70s. These switches date from the mid 60s and were a type that was typically installed in a small country exchange. They don't really look anything like Strouger's originals because it was considerably modernised and improved over the years, but the principle is the same. The principle of sending a call through the exchange was also called a step-by-step -step system because it goes through one step at a time. So if we want to make a call from this phone on the left to the one on the other side, we need to dial its number, which is 57862. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the handset, which connects us through to the first selector and the first selector sends us that dial tone. That's the equivalent of the operator saying, number please, so we're ready to go. So the first number is a five. When I dial the five, hopefully you can see this switch step up to the fifth level, and then it's gonna look across the contacts on that level to look for a free second selector, which is gonna be this one. So here we go. Well, we seize the second selector. Now this is waiting for the next number, which is a seven. Now we're through to the third selector, eight. And now we're through to the final selector. Now the final selector doesn't need to look for the next selector because there isn't one, this is the final. So we're going to step up to level six and then it sits there and waits. The final digit, which is a two, is going to step it to the second contact. That's the contact that this phone is wired to. When it steps to that contact, before it can start ringing, it's got to test the line, because that line could be busy, in which case it needs to send back busy tone to tell the caller they're talking on the phone, so you need to hang up and try again. Or it could be a spare line, in which case it needs to tell the caller by sending number unobtainable tone, which means that you've got the wrong number, so hang up and check it. And if it's free, then it's going to send back ringtone to tell the caller that the line is being rung. And it needs to send forward ringing current to ring the bell. So let's do the final two. There we go. It all happens a bit quick. When the call's answered, then the final selector needs to connect the two together so that we can speak. Hello? Yeah, hello, how are you? Also, the most important thing is the final selector needs to send a pulse back to the meter so that I get paid. And then at the end of the call, we're going to hang up and you see all the switches release, ready to take another call. It takes all this just to do one call. In a modern exchange, equipment that was using this amount of space could probably pass hundreds of calls at the same time. That's not so interesting to look at as this is. So why don't you give it a go for yourself?